This is what we know. A judge sentenced that 70s show star, Denny Masterson, to 30 years to life in prison today for raping two women, giving them some relief after they spoke in court about the decades of damage he inflicted. One woman who Masterson was convicted of raping in 2003 said this, when you raped me, you stole from me. That's what rape is, a theft of the spirit. So LA Superior Court Judge Charlene Olmedo handed down the sentence to the 47-year-old Masterson after hearing statements from the women and pleas for fairness from defense attorneys uh, as well. Uh, in the meantime, though, we do want to bring into the conversation here uh, Megan Kunif, uh, who was following this from the very beginning. We spoke to Megan last when Masterson was convicted. She joins me now. Uh, Megan, thanks for being with us here uh, on this Thursday night. Uh, my first question to you is, uh, because you've been following this so closely, were you surprised by the length of the sentence itself, 30 years to life in prison. Did that surprise you having covered this so extensively? Uh, no, I wasn't surprised because that was always really well known, at least in the courtroom gallery, that that was going to be the sentence if convicted, that each of these rape con charges that he had carried 15 years and that it, it they could be served consecutively. So really everyone saw the 30 year sentence coming for sure. Yeah, you know, we were kind of chatting about this in the newsroom, my colleagues and I, and we were trying to think of such a high profile celebrity who's had such a you know punitive sentence like this for such a horrible conviction and, and you know kind of r kelly came to mind i don't know if there were any precedents for this uh, did you think of anything today you know i i didn't and one thing that just sets this case apart from everything is uh, like you said masterson's position in hollywood but then also the presence of the church of scientology and given that it's really hard to compare it to really any other case yeah i, I was wondering if any of the jurors have spoken out uh, after this today have we heard from them since the conviction i know it's kind of you know wary or not whether or not the rules kind of restrict them from speaking out but uh have you heard from any of them not not yet. They would be completely free to speak all they want. Uh, some people did speak to the foreman of the first jury in the trial that ended in a mistrial because they were actually deadlocked in favor of acquittal. So he, we've heard from him, but I have not heard from uh, anyone associated with the jurors in the second trial. But we did hear from prosecutors today in the uh, post-sentencing press conference about the decisions the second jury made and just how the, the case differed from the first trial. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you were in the courtroom, I think, when this all went down today. Um, if you can, maybe give us a sense of Masterson's reaction. I mean, what is he, was he there in the courtroom to hear this? Did he say anything, if so? Yes, he, he was. And this is the first time that he's been seen in a, a public court setting since he's been in custody. But he wasn't in the typical uh, jail garb. He was allowed to change into a suit. So he was wearing a, a dark suit and had a, a pretty heavy beard, which I think is typical Danny Masterson. I think the shaving of the beard for both trials was strategic for the trial, but he's now uh, fully bearded. And uh, like I said, there was legally Judge Olmedo did not have a lot of room here. She could have done the 15 years con two concurrent sentences at the same time, H had him only served 15 years, but the 30 years was was really widely known. So I think Masterson had to have been warned by his attorneys basically that this was gonna happen. So he didn't have much of a reaction other than just purse slips, obviously isn't happy, is upset. But when he was uh, led out of the courtroom, he did blow a kiss to his wife, Bijou Phillips, who was in the gallery. Yeah, I wanted to ask kind of about, you know, who was there with him, what allies of his, of course, you said his wife was there. How's Hollywood taking this news? What, what are the reactions coming in first, though, from his allies? Have we heard? Well, I, I, I have not heard just in the last few hours if okay. any people have released statements, but there are 50 letters of support, at least 50 letters of support that were written for him that I'm understanding should be out tonight. Some uh, Another journalist is getting a copy and should be sending them to me, but his family members wrote letters, but also a lot of his friends and acquaintances, business partners and such over the years have written letters attesting to his kindness and his generosity. But uh, the judge had some pretty strong things to say to him 
today. And I think she made her her views clear that she thinks he's guilty and she uh, doesn't appreciate the the defense he's put on the public relations defense, blaming this on uh, a, a woman who has a vendetta against him and saying that this was uh, something that was kind of conspired against him in the later years after these supposed encounters. She she made it clear she thinks he's guilty. Yeah, and I just wanted to ask, too, because we got uh, some statements in as well from, from the victims. Uh, they were in court. They, they said their piece, right? They did. They did. Judge Olmedo also allowed the third victim that uh, jurors actually split eight to four in favor of guilty on her, but they did not convict. Uh, however, prosecutors asked that she be allowed to make a witness, a victim impact statement, oh, wow. and the judge allowed that. So her statement was the first one read. She did not read it herself, but she was in court, and she was in a six-year relationship with Masterson. So a lot of her statement was ab about the, the problems in the relationship and why it continued. Because, of course, a question she gets, and she knows that people wonder why would she keep going back or why would she stay in a relationship like this? So it was a lot of talk about the manipulation and, and just the self-esteem problems that came along with this. Yeah, so Megan, what happens next? Is he remanded into custody? Is he gonna serve this in California, in Los Angeles, or, or go somewhere else? Do we have those details? Yes, he's uh, in, been in the custody of the county jail, but now he is re remanded to the California Department of Corrections. So within a month or so, he should be transferred to a, a intake center where, where they will assess him and decide where in the California state prison system he's going to go. So he's got uh, some some travel and some transitions in the next month or so, but he should be getting settled somewhere in a, in a state prison. We don't know exactly where, but I'm sure we'll find out in the in the next month or so. Yeah, and Megan, I just wanted to ask too, you've done such extensive reporting on this and specifically uh, the role the Church of Scientology, you know, played in Danny Masterson's life, but also in this case as well. Have they released a statement today in response to the sentencing? Uh, and if you could maybe offer our viewers, you know, how instrumental they were, kind of the underpinnings throughout this whole case. Yeah, the church has made it very clear that they think there's tons of problems with this prosecution okay. and that this was he was being unfairly targeted because of his religion a reporter actually asked uh, prosecutors about that allegation in the post-sentencing press conference today and prosecutors just dismissed it as really not even worth addressing like at, at this point they just kind of you know kind of chuckled and kind of kind of scoffed and just said it's it's i mean it's basically ridiculous to think that at this point but the church is very uh, adamant that his religion was used against him and used improperly in this and his lawyers did issue a statement saying that uh, they're pursuing an appeal and that they have the best appellate attorneys in the state working for them and they did have a well-known respected appellate attorney arguing a motion for new trial before sentencing which is always kind of dead on the water in trial court but it previews the issues that we're going to be hearing about and uh, I, I, th I think they have a lot of things that they're coming up with. And one of the things is the focus on Scientology and some of the testimony about stalking and harassment that mm. the victims have felt that they're experiencing because they have separate lawsuits about that. And the judge was very careful to caution the jury. There was a, a jury instruction that this testimony is not to be taken for the truth of the matter, but for to establish state of mind of the victims why did it take so why were there these gaps in reporting why did they keep going back to masterson that kind of thing so it was allowed in for that but i think his attorneys are confident that there's a lot of new and and, and ripe issues for appeal there that we're going to be hearing about yeah that's so interesting because you know this has been such a marathon an initial jury failed to reach verdicts on three counts of rape in December of last year, and a mistrial was declared, and then prosecutors retried Masterson on all three counts earlier this year. We spoke last when that conviction came down. I mean, personally for you, having watched this, reported this from the very beginning, what are your overall impressions today? Where do you think this is going? Is this over? Is this shut? No, I think we're going to be seeing a, a really interesting appellate process, and especially with the Church of Scientology's resources, they've always have been well represented by really some of Los Angeles's top lawyers who have connections within the judiciary. I mean, there's a lot of Los Angeles County 
superior court judges, or at least a few who end up having to recuse themselves from cases that are assigned to them involving the Church of Scientology because a spouse has represented them or something. I mean, the LA legal community is pretty, pretty small and the, the cream of the crop has worked for the Church of Scientology. And they've, uh, Danny Masterson has good appellate counsel in court with them today. And it sounds like they've, they've got some real issues that they're going to explore. Whether it actually ends up in his convictions being overturned is, of course, a big question. But I think this is going to be a very interesting issue and, and appeal, not only for people who are interested in the case, but lawyers who are interested in appeals will be a paying, paying attention to this one, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Megan Cuniff, as always, we do appreciate you know your insight, your reporting uh, there in Los Angeles. And we'll talk again. Thanks so much. Thank you.